Welcome to the Rainmaker Multiplier On Demand, a podcast for leading financial professionals or rainmakers and their teams that offer support for securing a successful future. From marketing help to staffing structure, listen and subscribe for actionable insights from advisors and skilled professionals alike. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Rainmaker Multiplier On Demand. I am your host for today, Matt Seitz, CMO here at C2P. We have a fun topic, does your management style limit your success? And for today's topic, I think we have the perfect guest here. I am joined by Art Snarzik, President and Chief Turnover Terminator at Interview Advisors. Welcome, Art. Hey, thanks, Matt. Good to see you again. Great to see you. And before we even get into the interview, I got to know, because every time I look at this, I'm like, I've got to ask Art, and I keep forgetting to ask you, how did you come up with the title Chief Turnover Terminator? Oh, some magazine picked me up. I was hiring folks, and I came up with a cool methodology for hiring here in St. Louis. And the St. Louis Business Magazine started talking to me, and they said, so you, like, get rid of turnover. And they wanted a salacious magazine cover, and they dressed me up like the Terminator and all that stuff. So... I'm just writing that marketing as far as I can go. I was going to say, those are the best nicknames, right? Those that others are giving you. So that actually makes it even better. I love getting the backstory on that. So Art, we're going to jump in. I know we were chatting a little bit beforehand. I'm excited to share some of those stories along with it. But I know we got uh, a lot of questions because this is, a, a like I said, a fun topic for those and a hot topic for a lot of guys right now. So we'll jump in with the first one. Would you say that everyone's management style is different or are there common styles that work better than others? And could you explain why? Wow, you're going way deep fast, huh? We're starting out, we're starting out heavy. Let's do it. I think many people have different styles, but we can add different skills to those styles. So any style of person can be a good manager. There are some extroverts who we think are excellent managers of others or leaders or managers of themselves and introverts sometimes are like, are we represented there? But you can have an introverted leadership style as long as you have the right skills and, and things that you've bolted on probably experience as well. So I think many people with different styles can be great managers as long as you put the right stuff in place. Yeah. So that stuff, what are some of the factors to consider when you're establishing a management style for yourself or, or your team? I think the biggest thing to consider is who you are as a, as a manager. Maybe one place to start is we use a lot of assessments and interview advisors to help with hiring, team building, to help understand the people and personal development, all kinds of stuff. And there are indicators in there that tell us that people are different. So if you're a very direct uh, person and you like to get things done, those people will be managing in their way as long as they do it effectively and get results, that's fantastic. But there might be slower, steadier people who like to run a process and those process oriented people can be fantastic managers. And there's pluses and minuses to those traits. Any overextension of our skills or our, or our own personal traits can sometimes get in our own way. So if you're too direct, sometimes maybe you're too fast paced for slower moving people or you don't help them navigate through change easily enough. So. Just awareness and understanding of your own style is the first thing so that you can understand to your question. So you can understand who do I need around me? Do I need an, a mini me or do I need a yin to my yang to kind of counterbalance what, what I need done here in the, in the workplace? And really, I think the answer is always, what does your business need? Separate yourself from a business and what does the business need? Do they need a people focused manager or do they need a detail oriented uh, accounting manager, a controller? Right. Who's, hyper vigilant about mistakes. So do they need a nurturing culture builder? So really, what does your business need? Listen to that first, find out who you are. So you know how to really add your skills to that, find out the parts that you love and do those things, and then get somebody else to do all those other things you don't like doing. And I think we'll probably get into this later, but I, I'm sure some of these assessments too help you like each individual, those listening as a leader. I guess, evolve and adapt as well. Like you mentioned, like introverts, like I'm sure there's times where you have to be an extrovert in your role and vice versa. Because I think a lot of people naturally think of leaders as extroverts and that's not always the case. I actually just read an article just yesterday about how people assume that an, a leader must be an extrovert, but in all of the different qualities that make an introvert a great leader, most importantly being they listen better. They're not worried about talking, they're listening. Oftentimes, right? But I've met a lot of extroverts who've bolted on some really good interpersonal skills, understanding others' skills, empathy skills, 
These are some of the things the assessments let us hash out and say, which skills should I bolt on to my preferred behavioral style? I think a really good example are Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. It's Jobs is really extroverted and Bill Gates ran his company a little bit more introverted, right? But I'd like to say that we think the extroverts are all the leaders. We just don't hear from the introverted leaders. That's all. They're not screaming about it. I mean, that's what they say, right? That's what I was always taught. Lead by example. You don't have to be the loudest one in the room. Show them how, how to lead. So what would you say are some signs that your management style might be hindering your team or holding them back? Uh, those would be the common ones. I'm not getting the results, right? Uh, trying to push things and it's not happening. I'm not getting cooperation from other people. It's, if people aren't doing the things you're inspiring them to do, then you're not leading well, right? Something's amiss. It could be that other person, but that really we co-create, even if it is the other person and a lot of the fault can be put on them. It's still like, I still don't know how to manage that type of person. So we can always bolt those things on. So I guess you mentioned yin and yang. We'll go on the flip side of that. What are some signs that your management style might be hindering your own work? So not those around you, but even getting in your own way. Yeah. The well, from for me, it's those sabotaging thoughts. Like, and, and for most people, it's those things that come in. Like, I have all these priorities and I'm not very good at prioritizing them. Or I don't like doing administrative work, so I wait till the last minute to do that stuff. And those are like self-management issues. They could be self-confidence issues. But really, as you start to understand who you are and you get to see yourself through all these different lenses of all the cool sciences out there, or some bias towards assessments, it helps me understand me and others better and helps me help you understand people better. The better you understand yourself, the better you can manage yourself. And the better you can understand and manage yourself, the better you understand and manage other people. And that gets into something that sounds mushy, but it's, EQ or emotional quotient or emotional intelligence, which is the predictor of great leadership. The more EQ one has, the better leadership they'll have. As a matter of fact, there are science studies that show that the level of EQ, emotional intelligence, that um, a leader has, that's the amount of EQ that their team will grow to. They won't surpass that. If they do surpass it, they'll go work somewhere else because they know they're working with somebody who's not as competent with themselves and other humans as they are. So really EQ is the game changer for leadership, regardless of your style. That's fascinating because I, I come from a sports background and team-oriented sports, basketball, baseball, and you always heard you, you're only as good as your weakest link. And so you think about that on a team, someone around you, but you're saying different, which I, I like because it puts the onus on the leader of your team is as strong as your emotional intelligence can be as a leader. So that's an interesting twist. And I love that because it puts it on the leader to control the, the, the destiny of their team and, how, and the heights they can reach. So do you have any examples? I think that might be valuable too for our audience of leaders that have, have worked with you or done your assessments and then, and then worked with you on that to identify they need help in this area and reached a, a new level of, of heights for their team. Yeah, interesting. I, I think the first example is back to your sports relations. You're not always as weak as your weakest link. If I know that weakest link has these two skills, like they can defend well, right? But that's it. But they're the weakest of the link, of all the links on the chain. EQ is like that field awareness, right? It's like I know where the running back is and I know where the wideouts are at all points. That's what EQ does. I know how I'm feeling about this. I just took a hit and I can keep going and I can still get that pass off. And that it's field awareness and knowing I'm not going to pass to the lineman because he's a weak link in catching passes. So that's what I think EQ is. As far as examples just a lot of times self-awareness of understanding yourself i use the disc model as one of the foundational pieces but i never use just that alone there's some other great folks in c2p gina uses colby so that there's a myers briggs there's lots of assessments so we can look at ourselves through different lenses and the better you understand yourself the more ahas you have about how i'm stepping on my own toes or how oh, i see why that in a will interpersonal relationship with Matt doesn't work sometimes because I like to have more fun than he does when he wants to get serious or whatever that is. But the more you see that on a page in science, on a graph, 
the more ahas you have. And now I can learn some techniques to deal with those differences in people. No, I, and I'm glad you mentioned that too, like not disc, but some of those other ones, because yeah. the listeners or viewers today, if they haven't done those, I would highly encourage those. And obviously we'll put the links for this info from art down below uh, or in the chat messages, whether you're, you're watching or listening today, but doing those as part of your team. I know our leadership team here at C2P does those to know how we work together. And then me for my marketing and, and business development team here. It's great with understanding where everyone's at. And like you said, our meeting everyone where they're at and playing to everybody's strengths as a team. I love that you put it that way because, again, it plays to the strategy behind it. Everyone doesn't have to be good at everything. That you, you don't want that. You want a mix with the team. And so playing to everybody's strength is, is great. And playing to them, also leveraging it. But not only do the assessments help me understand you better and say, okay, and get serious when Matt hangs, you get serious. You can have fun after the call. Right. And then uh, it's not a true example. Matt's as fun as you can be. But then also after you understand who you are, you can understand the other people and then bridge that gap. And that's really, uh, that's the key. How do I bridge the gap and not just use people, but leverage the strengths and maybe even identify some areas where people need to improve. If, if you see that someone is not doing as well as they should in one area, some of that can come to light through an assessment that could be just. They're not good at planning and organizing or managing their time well. Maybe they're just not personally accountable. Oh, that was the market. That couldn't hit the numbers, right? You can measure those things, and those are all skills you can build. Matt, if I can just tell you, I think that so many people think they're stuck in this way they were born, and you have to be this way. There are pieces of you that probably won't change over time, right? There's some core to us that we know with us, and then there's other things that we... It's like going to the gym. If I give a lot of presentations and podcasts, well, I'll become better and better. But if I take the eight months off, I'll, I'll, need, I'll turn flabby and I need to get back to the gym. So just know that you're not stuck in your way. You can build these skills. You can learn how to be more in tune to what other people are feeling or how they like to be appreciated, all those things. Yeah, and I like is it. It's also a way to, to bond, to engage your team and, and keep developing everyone personally and professionally. And I guess with that, you want to develop your team and keep them there. You are working closely with a lot of people when it comes to reducing turnover. Have you noticed any particular management styles that may contribute to employee turnover? I would say it is people who are, uh, listen, it's going to be your visionaries who are too fast to pay. It's, it's people who are not aware that they are they are different than others and other people need something out of them different than what they just are going to come bring naturally. So it's that it's people who are too fast paced to really hold a mirror up for a second and say, that person needs to be walked through this change in the business first, instead of me just coming in with a new idea on Monday or it's some people, maybe less direct people have a problem addressing issues when they come up and they, they let them like just simmer and the pot blows over. I think each style has their own, I want to say strengths and weakness. I want to say asset and liability, right? Because I don't like to think that weaknesses. I'd like to say, I just need to know that I have these propensities that are going to offend those types of people. If I'm aware of that, then I can make those adjustments. And I can see that too. I've seen that throughout my career. Those listening or watching have probably noticed that too. When you mentioned the visionary role, because with that comes a lot of change. And I think it's a natural instinct or human nature that a lot of people just don't like change or fear change. And that's one thing that, that I've learned over time. It's not necessarily the, the change that they fear, it's the unknown. And so when you have individuals with those skill sets that are better at communicating the change and helping others adapt. It makes sense for what you're describing there from the visionary versus the other roles. Yeah, and that's interesting. Change management. I've learned that at a C2P conference just recently. The sales <laughs> presentation was fantastic. And the guy said, sales is nothing more than helping someone navigate change. You're doing this bit wrong, right? And you want a solution. Is this one going to work? If so, do you need help walk you through that? And that's management, isn't it? I use Sandler sales system to raise my daughter, Matt. It's just so easy. It's the, it's a statement question stuff. It's, it's, you need to brush your teeth before bed. Do you want to do that after dinner, before dinner or right before bed? <laughs> Boom. I'm helping her now me change. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, I know we were talking about the kids in school. Everyone's going back to school right now. 
I noticed myself using the, the Sandler tips and tricks uh, on my kids as well. <laughs> Tips and tricks, but they're really just life hacks. They're psychology. That's all sales is psychology. Do I understand the psychology of people? Do I understand that other people think of things differently than I? And what is it that I can say to them that's going to help them buy my stuff if it's the right thing or help them be a, be a no fast so I can move on? Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes helping to understand that like mindset change of just thinking about something differently. That's it. Yeah. And how do you present that idea to somebody who thinks differently than you? Yeah. So with that, and, and I guess even tying into the last answer, when you talk about the visionary, there's a lot of times that sets the company culture. We see that here, and I'm sure, sure you do that for your team. How does a company's culture impact their management style? So maybe not even just like the CEO, but each lane leader or manager from there. How are they? How is their management style impacted by the company culture? And if there is a mismatch there, how can it be corrected? Like, what can they do from working with you in some of these assessments? Matt, that was a softball, a t-ball there. But the, uh, the, we, we didn't even try to set that up, but I'm glad you said that. <laughs> yeah. We, understanding the other people is the first thing, of course. Is understanding yeah. them. And we talk about DISC and our behavioral preferences. And another thing that we always measure in our assessments and in the right fit advisor assessments when we're trying to hire a, a new advisor or a care plan or any of the assessments we use with CGP, we always include these motivators. And those motivators are our values. And what's really important about our values is that they are our culture. These, what you value is important to you. And if you value the things that I value, then I value you. If you don't love the things I love, then I don't understand why some kind of weird person because I'm the ideal person. So why do you love something different? So when you understand the values of a person, are they, are they very altruistic? Are they very theoretical? They like to research. Are we a research type company? Are we a profit ROI driven company? Are we a help the community company? Are we doing it for the cause type of company? Are we doing it to crush competition type of company? Those are very, six very different cultures I just mentioned. And you, understanding who the visionary is and what he values or she values is super important because that you want to find other people with the same values. So DISC is how we behave, and I like to say, and the motivators of why we act that way. The DISC is, our, is a, the style we look like as we go and accomplish these motivators. And if you have different ones than me, you're in weird we're going to have a different culture. So you could be a perfect admin assistant for this company, but because you don't want to crush competition, you want to do it to help the community. You're just going to have that clash. So I like to say this, not only with businesses and culture, but also partnerships, boards. And even when I do this personally, even we're talking about relationships, your behavioral style in disc, uh, some opposites attract, but in our motivators, the similarities endure. I love what you love. The way you behave sometimes drives me crazy, but at, at least we're trying to build the same thing. We have the same idea of what a family is or what a business is, even though you behave in a different way than I do. Sometimes it rubs me wrong. Yeah. No, it's interesting how you're tying that portion into the, the the core values of the company and how that's so important in the I guess not even on the day to day and all the way into the hiring process because you want to it's a marriage and you want to make sure that that both sides are aligned on that yeah that, that's exactly right and the core values if people are struggling with that these assessments help you really hash out their the assessments are not really anything you don't know about yourself that you put the answers and I just tell you with based on those patterns People with your style typically do this kind of things. It gives you a deeper, richer look and the nuance of who I am instead of just like this idea of who I am. Yeah. Do you, this is now out of my own curiosity, when you're working with organizations like ours, a C2P or with a, any of our advisory offices, and you're handing out the assessment results and you're reviewing those as a team, I was wondering, like, you get a kick out of that because I know like myself, I'll look and I'll be like, oh yeah, that is me. And then you look to your neighbor, your coworker, and it's, you start to see like, oh, okay, that's why we have these kind of interactions. You know, I am, uh, I'm a, a very high I, and I look to my left and someone else on our leadership team, like, oh, okay, you're a very high D. That explains why 
we're approaching a conversation or a situation this way. Like, is that kind of, uh, do they become kind of aha moments for you too? Is, is someone facilitating? I get to learn and teach every day. So that's what I love. And I get to learn and teach human things, which is interesting because all my research is meat search. But yes, only every time that when I sit down <laughs> with people, they're like, yeah, that's why you drive me crazy. And these are people who are handling big problems at work and have struggled for months. But then when you see it on a chart and a graph and you can see I score here and you score there, it's, of course, now we can take a deep breath and say, how are we going to do this together? And I think, too, it also speaks to why different assessments are necessary. There's not a be all end on you, you specialize in so many on your end, why it makes sense that you can't just read. You can't just read a disk assessment and be like, oh, OK, this is going to solve all of our communication issues on our team like it explains it, it makes sense why it's important to go through different assessments and working with with someone like yourself to explain the the situation you're going through as a team this is why this assessment might be a good one at this point in time perfect Matt. perfect it's, it's like the old toolbox analogy you want to have a couple different tools but a screwdriver doesn't beat nails into the wall it can if you're in a jam but uh, it's not that's like going and getting a free assessment off of some website. You're hammering in there, but really understanding what do I need to measure? Let's not measure anything more that I don't need to measure. And also let's look through different lenses. How can I see somebody from different angles instead of one biopic way? But many times there's a time where you just need to know how somebody goes to work and you want a Colby assessment for that. You call Gina for that right. right away. What, what are some steps that someone can take if they wish to correct or strengthen their management styles specifically? I know we're talking about different things that different assessments can address, but if they want to address their management style, the topic of today, what would you recommend? It goes back to, uh, this is cheeky, but know, grow, and show. You got to know who you are first, and then you have to grow if you want to. And you get to choose which pieces. And some pieces, maybe I don't want to grow. You know, I don't want to be super analytical. I'll we'll hire somebody for that. But grow the pieces you want. Grow your management style. Learn some EQ tools so you can understand how to help other people feel out from their events all day long. But bolt on some skills. So first know and then bolt on skills and grow. And then just go out and show that and model that. The EQ, why no one raises above the level of their manager in emotional intelligence uh, is because the manager is modeling to them what they should be. Right? And that's why it's important for us to grow so that we can go and show, here's how I want you guys to behave. Here's how I want you to deal with conflict. Instead of flaming you with an email, I'd rather we have a quick conversation, set a time for that. But, and then that's a cycle. Then go back and know yourself again and get more clear and grounded and be you and then grow whatever pieces you want. Maybe things are going great and you want to grow your, your golf score and then you shrink <laughs> and then go show it off. But you just that continuous process. So know yourself, grow yourself. It's, it's about measuring, developing, and then just activating. I can summarize it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So that's a constant cycle, the know, grow, and show, because I'm assuming whether it's solving a, a problem as a team or just evolving as a team, right? That's why it's, a, it's an ongoing thing. That's it. And hopefully your team's growing, but you have new people, and now we have to introduce them, and they need to now understand who we are because we've grown our culture. We need to understand how to welcome that person in, leverage them, see where they play on the field. So... If you're growing, it's it's a continuous process. I think it's a great time. I like to use these assessments for a lot of personal stuff. I'm known, you know, I got the moniker of the turnover terminator because I do it a lot with hiring. Because the first step is make sure you bring in the right people you need. That's a nice first step, and then work with that instead of bringing in just anybody and hoping they'll work out. But in in hiring, these are pretty important first steps. Make sure you don't hire the wrong person. And then after that, then it's more team stuff, right? All right. Are there any like specific trainings or resources that you would recommend someone listening that wants to better understand their own management style? Or if they're listening and you've impacted them right away, they outright want to change it. Do you have any resources that you would recommend? Yeah, there are a few. I think the biggest one that I think going right now is uh, positive intelligence. And it's really the operating system, the tactical, the small, little 
moves you make, the techniques in order to grow your emotional intelligence and awareness? How do, how do you ground yourself? How do you sober up from the negative events that happen to you all day? You get a great email that says you, you got the sale and you're happy. And then you got this other one that customer's upset and now you're not happy. How quickly you sober up from those events so that you can make mm. sage decisions. So positive intelligence is fantastic. I've got a, a friend who does that at a high level. Uh, Michael Burke is a fantastic coach on that, has some great programs. Uh, my EQ assessments are fantastic. Uh, any of my assessments and C2P members, of course, always have access to me through Mentor Connect. And uh, feel free to take me up on that. Uh, listen, take it for a test drive, see if it fits for you. <laughs> No, that's great. Thank you, Art. And we'll make sure any of our current members, obviously they know they can find Art on our Mentor Connect platform. We'll also make sure, Art, we have all of your contact information in our show notes with the associated podcast. Um, but thank you very much for joining us today. I think this was a, a very helpful topic to engage in. Hopefully you enjoyed this and you can tune into additional ones because I know, Art, we've got a couple more scheduled here. we got a a little mini series of uh, Matt and Art podcasts coming up. So I guess this is really step one in that, but thank you very much, Art, for joining us today. I love it, Matt. Looking forward to it. I love supporting you guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to the today's Rainmaker Multiplier On Demand. Thanks for tuning in. This podcast was brought to you by C2P, an organization whose purpose is to educate, train, grow, and support holistic financial advisors so families can achieve true prosperity. Never miss an episode by subscribing now to discover new resources and strategies. Visit c2penterprises.com to learn how we can help scale and secure your business. At the time of delivery and any subsequent publishing, information was deemed reliable but is subject to change by the time of listening or viewing. The contents of this piece include options and projections of C2P, are subject to change, and are for informational purposes only. The information provided in this presentation is not intended to be individual investment, tax, or legal advice.